and decorating, arts and crafts, textile and felt processing, hunting, falconry, smith works and jewellery. We showcase our national identity in the Kazart program. Before I started this piece here, I conducted some in-depth research and foraged historical sources. I tried and measured several different compositional styles, picked the one I like most and continued working on it. After that, I picked up watercolor paper and plunged into the search of the correct color palette. I drew the mornings, noons and evenings on it. From those, I chose the noon and the evening and started working on a big canvas prefer working on the square pieces. In this particular work, I decided to depict a young woman and a young man connected to the nature around them. The Kazakh fine art is a subdomain of the national folk art. Kazakh fine art is generally divided into the historical, domestic, military, animalistic, and several more sub-genres. The graphics and small paintings include still lifes and landscapes. The Kazakh visual arts cover numerous subjects, the ancient Kazakh traditions, national games, the art of aits, the national costumes, household items and furniture, and many, many more. The subject of the traditional games is prolifically represented in the auteur of the local artist. Each culture has its own identity, traditions, a certain spirit and values which clearly demonstrate the peculiarity and uniqueness of the nation. From this point of view, the national games were one of the major parts of the heirloom passed on from father to son. The games play such an important role because they have a very strong educational effect. They force the children to develop agility, intelligence, mastery, audacity and courage. Kazakh national games shape children, especially boys, into strong free-willed men who roam the steppe. Chasing the girl is one of the older national games. The rules of the game remain the same across the different historical periods. According to the old tradition, a young groom was to chase his future wife. The old historic sources say that certain tribes practiced this game as early as in the 7th to 8th century. The stakes were very high. If the young groom failed to chase and snatch the girl, he lost the chance to marry her. If, on the opposite, the girl fails to escape, she marries away to the guy without being paid the dowry. It took me almost a year to finish this painting. The subject itself is very hard. The spirit of Kizku can't be transferred in one to two days' work. In my work, the groom is depicted in the moment of kissing the girl he has successfully chased down. Besides the obvious drive of the racing animals, I depicted the costumes of young people, the splendid mountains, the sprawling green grass set off with red poppy flowers. All of this takes time. Connecting all the elements of this scene into one single moment was my first goal for this piece. I invested a lot of time into the research for this painting and used extra time to study the national costumes. The subject is tightly connected to the Kazakh essence, its sole organization, and traditions of husbanding the household. One could easily observe how our ancestors lived and what philosophy relied on back then. An artist's ability to capture these intangible assets of our culture is a great sign of its own. Now, if we shall talk about the other national games, we should describe the game of Asik, meant for the youngsters, and Doda, for the adults. 
These seemingly diverse games are irreversibly similar in their origin. They all stem from the traditions and customs. Now if we talk about Alti, Bakan or Aksuyik, we will see that these were meant to bring young men and women together, introduce them to each other to further create families. From an outsider's point of view, these games are the mirror in which the relationships between young people reflect clearly. The Kazakh national games are a great school to exercise agility, sensibility, drive and warrior skills. Capturing this immense amount of movement and drive on a canvas takes a good artist's serious exploration. To pick the perfect way to convey the dynamic of the moment requires a lot of research. I snatched any chance to see, experience and capture the movement of the real animal, the real people to be able to convey it correctly. I attended all Kuz Ku races and spent the holiday of Nauru's carefully observing the behavior of all the participants. I tried and tried to create the sketches of the animals and the people separately to receive the best composition possible and finally arrived at the one I liked the most. Before attempting at any work, an artist shall entrench himself in deep research, collect historical data, consider all perspectives the subject can render. He must decide what time of year and what time of day and whom he wants to see on his canvas. Whether the subject is historical or cultural, the artist should seek the fullest set of information about it. Now, per the movement of the humans atop a horse, these movements atop a horse as well as the behavior of the horse itself should not interfere with the main idea behind the painting. On the opposite, every element of the composition is to support the main direction of movement, the main plane of thought, complement each other, empathize each other, and balance each other out if necessary, even if we are talking about a simple blot of paint. It should enhance its surrounding and at least have a purpose for its positioning. The number of national games is boundless, however the number of paintings with horse races is overwhelmingly higher. A painting called The Horse is the Warrior's Wings shows a very special relationship between the Kazakhs and horses. Presented as the greatest gifts and the most exciting entertainment, the horses were ubiquitous at the massive celebratory gatherings and small private events. Korpar, Audari Spak, Tinge Alu, Baigie, Jambi Atu were all attempted by the greatest artists as the subjects of the paintings. One of the good examples is Kanapia Tiljanov's Kokpar composition. The game is very high energy and the whole vibe of the movement is conveyed through the image of the horses brushing against each other, some tripping, some sneering with the clouds of dust and the disturbed green grass in the background literally make you hear all the tussle and thuds, as if you are present in the moment. The racer in red is the winner of the race and the reason we know that lies in the winner throwing the whip in the air. This is one of the paintings that use the whip in the air as a way of conveying the victory. Each game has its own specificity. For example, Aksuyek game is only played at night, during the full moon. The glaring white bone is only visible in the moonlight and allows the young people who dissipate in the open field to find it. Another major feature of the national games is its special boundlessness. The vast step allowed having games in the massive territories. This boundless horizon seemed to have affected our tolerance and openness to the core. When you have so much land to cover, it wasn't surprising that a new way of getting around, even in games, took leadership. Kokpar, Kuz Ku, Adariya Spak, Tinge Alu are all played atop a horse. 
This talks volumes about our nomadic past and peaceful character in the present. Capturing the movement of the animals requires extensive knowledge about the plasticity of the subject. For example, composing for the game of Kokpar is a very hard task. The artist needs to show the minute details in the body movement of the rider as well as the horse and can take many attempts to get it right. When drawing the movement, muscle flexing, the strength of the character, we use the power of color. The color conveys the thickness of the dust cloud as well. All of this is to show the context in which the symbolic harness, the saddle, passed on by our forefathers, can find its respectful place. Our hearts are at work. Putting your heart to work makes the final piece alive. It somehow attracts more eyes and affects the views way deeper. How do the modern artists show the national games? In what cases do they experience trouble painting? Let's talk about the ways they approach this task. How do they plan to start? The fact that we have settled and the nomadic past have moved further and further from us obviously gives birth to strong ideas. How is somebody who hasn't ridden a horse, slept in a Kazakh yurt house, or lived the life of a villager expected to talk about all this in his paintings? It will be hard. When painting the national games, the artist focuses on the integrity of the scene. The idea that the artist puts in his creation must converge with compositional beauty and the color palette. Nowadays, both the young and experienced artists try their hand at their interpretation of the national game painting and seek new ways of telling the story behind. I've been watching them and have divided into two rough groups. One for the worker, somebody who works with his hands only, and the other group is the master. They equally use their ideas and their skills. The third group is the creators. They put their heart and their work through their ideas and skills. I strongly believe that before starting any painting, an artist needs to know how to do it, understand what he is going to paint, and experience and live through his subject. This is the condition for the complete transformation of the idea onto the canvas, and as a result, one straight way to the viewer's heart. The national games are the nation's heirloom. Many an artist tried his brush in this subject. Among them are the big names of the 20th century, the forefathers of the Kazakh fine arts from the 30s, Abelhan Kasteyev, Aubakir Ismailov, Kulachmet Kajikov, all have works in the subject. Kasteyev's Kokpar is one of the greatest works. A very special composition for this genre is presented in Kulachmet Kozhikov's Kokpar painted in watercolor. Aubakir Gizmailov used gouache paints to capture the wrestlers and achieved a decorative applied art feeling in his work. The vivid, thick gouache colors make the bulky bodies of the wrestlers invincible, 
and the cheering crowd around the circle more emotional and upbeat. Starting in the 60s, Yevgenia Sidorkin became the flagship of the national game paintings. He raised the art of drawing the horse races to a very high professional level. In 1963, he started the auto-lithographic series of paintings called the Kazakh National Games. The series included four big-scale pieces, the eagle hunting, Kukpar, and Baigia. These works are considered the mainstays of the genre that propelled the interest of the subject among many generations of artists to come. One of them, Kukpar, proved to be an outstanding compositional work produced in one color on a thin piece of paper, while Kastev's Kukpar was a multicolored watercolor. While Yevgenia Sidorkin portrayed a very interesting composition with a lithographic method, he was able to fit in one sheet of paper a heated scene of the fight between two racers tagging a dead goat from such an unusual angle that a viewer can't help but think that the piece feels like a print of a statue chiseled out of solid stone. The subject of the national games and the paintings was revisited in the 1980s. One of the artists who revived the movement was Isatai Isabayev. His Kokpar and Tingi Alu that came from under the etched copper plates are familiar to the national art enthusiast. If we look back the main body of works from that period, we could see that the national game's subject was very popular. Among the works, we can find the depiction of Kokpar Kuzku and Baige more often than any other type of the games. Through the perspective of each and every artist, the paintings with national games received distinct flavors or signatures of their creators and became the mirror of their thoughts on the subject. Only the realistic depiction of the events can convey the fever pitch of the situation, the tension in the muscles of the bodies of the racers, their agility and flexibility. Audari Spak, also known as Kokpar, is the game for the strong-willed and strong-bodied individuals. Showing the perfectly groomed characters with smooth faces would be a crime. So while the painters strove to paint muscular, dark-skinned individuals whose character and thoughts were read from their facial expressions. Men for the strong and fast men, these games didn't allow for expressive freedom, so the minute details of the tense muscles were important to convey the full story. That's why several attempts at the mimics were taken before the final version got realized in paint. The fine arts are important in raising a high-spirited generation. So are the national games that are passed on to us. The games can teach the young to be loyal citizens of their land and serve their country. Now the art enthusiasts are waiting for the new wave of the works in such an important subject. <laughs>